Hello. Hopefully this works today. Sorry for the delay. Um, hi. Got three people here. Two now. Saw me and they're like, I'm out. Peace. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, if this is your first time, welcome. I'm Spencer and we are sketching today. So as always, seems like I'm a little bit behind, but um, we'll get started. I'm wearing a cap because I have a giant zit on my forehead today. So <laughs> sorry about that, um, but nothing I can do about that problem. Anyhow, um, as always, open to suggestions, anything you want to see. I'm only going to be able to go till about 10, or sorry, uh, yeah, 10 Pacific today. So um, I'm just going to jump right into it and be quick. Um, if there's any problems with audio, video, whatever, let me know. Still figuring out all this stuff. So, but most importantly, just having fun. So yeah, if you have any questions, requests, whatever, um, that's cool. So I thought I would sketch on vellum today because I've kind of been enjoying it and I've got some scrap, I've got some scrap vellum here. So I've seen to sharpen a couple pencils. How's everyone doing? Happy uh, Valentine's Day or if you're like me, Single Awareness Day. Super fun, right? Let's grab my giant, oh, giant pencil box here. Can I sketch some water bottles? Um, sure. I could I could do a water bottle. I see no reason why not. Where's everyone checking in from today? In case you don't know, I am sorry about that. I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. That's where I live and do my thing. Um, it's been a busy, busy week for me. Had a lot of work to do. Um, so yeah, it's been super busy. So I've got two cameras today. I've got an overhead, which I think is this one. Yeah. So I've got an overhead and then I have an over shoulder as well. So whichever one, um, works better. And this, this will just give you a different perspective on what I'm doing. So I hope, um, I guess let me know, and if not, that's fine too. But I figured it'd be good to have a different different angle for you guys. All right, so I'm gonna start with just drawing a, a car because I want to. And if you hate if you hate cars, too bad. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let me cut. I don't know why this camera got off for some reason, but let me tighten this up. Okay, and all right, we are mostly good, but again, it's a little bit off. There, there we go. Tennessee, France, gonna attempt to draw along, cool. New subscriber, hello Zach, and thank you. All right, so a couple ways I like to draw cars. Um, you know, you can just kind of start with the wheels or um, if the music's too loud, let me know. Um, start with the wheels or start with the box, whatever. doesn't really matter that much. Um, I'm going to start with just in a, a giant ellipse or blob here. A couple wheels. Maybe I'll do a truck. I haven't done a truck in a while. You know, and then kind of get grill, maybe main body line, hood. Gonna draw that in, wheel flares. Come down like so. With cars, I like to try and continue the lines through as well. Or any kind of vehicle, I should say. Just helps it be a more cohesive Design. I'm using Prismacolor, Mar Prismacolor uh, pencils. My apologies. Um, if you're wondering what I'm using today, if 
Trucks always seem to have like really crazy lights and stuff. So I'm gonna make make this have some some nice big headlights. Maybe it is a Ford or Chevy, whatever. Um, who knows? We're just having fun as always. Keep those lines nice and loose. I'm drawing with my shoulder. Um, so maybe this is where um, seeing over my shoulder might, might help you guys a little bit. Um, kind of see what I'm doing here. <clears throat> okay. Let's get the rest of our body line. And the giant wheel here. Offset some ellipses, and then kind of just get my spokes in. I'm using a very thin pencil by Prismacolor and Vellum, in case you're wondering. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask any questions as we go along. Zach is a junior in high school. Wow, you're starting way earlier than, than I ever started, so props and kudos to you for doing that. I think uh, I think the earlier you start, the better, of course, because you have more time to kind of work on your craft, hone your skills. So props to you for that. Don't have as many people today. Maybe... Uh, Maybe everyone's out on early dates or something. Yeah. For their VD, Valentine's Day. Holiday or whatever. I'm not really a big holiday person myself. Um, which, you know, to each their own, but. It's hard enough to find time for life itself and then you know, got the added pressure of a holiday. It's a lot. All right. So a nice body line in here on the side. And we'll fix things with markers and some pencil as we go. Okay, and maybe, maybe we'll just add a couple little feature lines here. And I'm just trying to map out what the shape of some of these cross sections are as I go, just with some light, light lines. And then I like to hint at an interior a little bit without doing the full interior. So something like that. And the nice thing is it's in pencil. So, um, you know, when, we've, when we start applying a marker with a little heavier color and so forth, um, it should come out a little cleaner. I broke the tip of my pencil, so I have to uh, resharpen. Hello from Ukraine. Is this, your is this your first time joining us? If so, welcome. This pencil is bunk, so I'm gonna. Sometimes, oh, here's a here's a tip for you. <laughs> um, it's a little dangerous, but one thing you can do if you have a pencil that um, when you sharpen it, it like keeps losing the points, is you can put one of these in the microwave for just a few seconds. Now, how long that is, you kind of have to decide. Maybe I'll do a video on it. There was an article on my website a long time ago about this, but you can throw the pencil in the microwave, just hit it for a couple seconds, and it'll actually refuse the lead together in the pencil so you can use it again. So that's what I'll do after the video is over, um, is I'll, I'll just, go hit my pencil in the microwave for a bit and uh, it'll be like new. So there's a tip for you. All right, a little mirror action there. Got our wheel stuff. Uh, let's see, there, there. Just like that, okay, cool. So we're probably in a decent place to start adding some marker and color to this. Um, and I thought, I thought we'd just have some fun today. Um, and show you something a little bit different. So I have these um, cotton swabs that I brought as well as my marker inks here. So we're gonna do a wash um, and I want you guys to pick what color the truck should be. So we can do a yellow truck, red, blue, green, 
or gray, but let me know. I'm going to grab some ink here in the meantime and see what you guys think. Actually, I've got my, so I've got cool gray here already. I've got some, yeah, cool gray three, red, red, red. Okay. Red. Sounds like we're doing a red truck. All right. So I've got some red inks and I've never opened these. So this should be interesting. And we can even, let's see, if we do red, we can do some blue on the top. But I don't think I have any blue inks. I'm pretty sure I don't. So maybe we'll make a combination of red and yellow. And then we'll, we'll just shade from there. So I have red 24, 29, and 27. And as always, you want to start with your lighter color first. So <clears throat> I flipped the sketch. Um, another thing you can do when you flip the sketch is it can, it can show you like what's wrong. So I can see that the back wheel here is off. So I'm gonna try and fix that before I commit to this. Okay, so flip it, it kind of re, what's the word? It, it adjusts your brain so that you're like, oh shoot, okay. Let's, let's change this ellipse. And then now I'm gonna flip it over, feels a little bit better. Now you might be wondering, oh man, well, this is in perspective, so why is the wheel and I get, I get this comment from people all the time, oh, the wheels are off. But um, one thing with cars you'll notice is there's this thing called a camber. And yes, it's a stylistic thing. Um, but if you have the wheels on a vehicle, let's say this is the front view of some vehicle here. Okay, here's the hood. Like so, light, cab, mirrors. All that good stuff, right? So what typically happens, um, if you look at a car, is the wheels aren't completely straight up and down. They're actually slightly angled, okay? And that's called camber. And so when you're doing a perspective sketch, if the wheels were completely um, without camber, then yes, the angle of the wheels would be such that they respect the rules of perspective. But because they're at an angle, the axes of the wheel. So, and I'm going to exaggerate this so you guys can see it. So if my wheel is slightly angled out, okay, like that, then my perspective line, I'll do this in blue. I always forget to close my mail program. My apologies. Um, my perspective line here is actually going to shoot at an angle like so. So when you look at a sketch like this guy and you're like, oh man, the center of his wheel is not following the perspective line of the vehicle. It's because I'm exaggerating for stylistic purposes, the camber on the wheels. So now you have an explanation. If you're ever wondering why are his wheels always off? Um, I'm trying to capture a bit of that attitude in the wheels and you can see it, you know, some designers exaggerate it more or less than others. But if you look at car sketches, you can, you can see it in those sketches. So that's, that's what's happening here. All right, cool. So back to the sketch, I'm going to flip this over. I'm working with, um, vellum so I can flip it over and then apply the ink to the, to the backside here. So I'm just going to open this Copic ink. Nice and fresh. Now I haven't done this in a long time, so this may completely flop. <laughs> fully, um, fully possible here, but we're just gonna have some fun. Now with the inks, I can just apply some ink to this pad. I usually like to have a binder clip as I'm doing this, but we'll just kind of make a giant marker, okay? Kind of like this, get a little bit more on here, and I'm gonna concentrate the red kind of on the center of this, like so. And yes, I could use my airbrush to do this as well. Um, and like I said, I wanted to mix some yellow in, so I'm going to, let me open up this yellow. Hello, Lynette, how are you doing? Do I have a favorite product to draw? Drawing for your homework. I have to draw for my homework. My favorite products, um, cars, robot shoes. Those are kind of my my go-to things. So 
if you've uh, if you haven't noticed, I like doing those things. So with the the pad here, um, or not? Yeah, with the the cotton pad, I can kind of create a giant marker and gradient, like so. So now, and it's gonna bleed through and all that, but we'll use this as our our scrap paper. Let me cover these so that we don't create a huge mess here. And if I'm doing like, someone asked to do water bottles earlier, so I'm gonna do water bottles as a second sketch, um, unless you guys have some other ideas, but that's what I'm gonna be focusing on today. So yeah, just a giant vellum pad. And so now you can see there's kind of a gradient to this whole thing, um, which is nice, because then I can kind of work off of that. And then now I wanna focus on capturing reflections, highlights, and so forth. Fortunately, I have white um, markers. I've got a bunch of reds as well, but I always like to start with my lightest light. How much is the ink I'm using? It's about five bucks a bottle. And well, I shouldn't say that. On Amazon, it's a little bit more. There are websites you can go to that will have them um, a little bit cheaper as well. So it just depends on where you shop, really. But with the marker here, what I'm what I'm doing is trying to create um, the reflections that would be a part of the body on this vehicle, like so, and using using the wash as a base. Okay, so just a little trick if you want to try something different with your markers, and it doesn't necessarily have to be marker ink um, from from uh, Copic, because one of the things you can actually do. If you have a cheaper marker, and I'm not, I'm not going to do it on the stream here uh, because I'm not prepared for the mess that will ensue. But one of the things you can do is you can um, take like a cheap Prismacolor or chart pack marker. Those are a lot cheaper. You can break it in half and use the core of the marker to then kind of shade on your page. OK, so hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, just with my lightest marker, lightest lights to darkest darks is how we always want to work. Okay, so with my lightest red, and then I can capture any reflections I need to capture, like so, all along the way. Now, as far as the mechanics of reflections go, I can do a I can do a quick sketch here and show you kind of how my brain is thinking as I do this. Hello, Toby from Southern California. And as always, I'll scan or take pictures of these and post on um, uh, my Google Drive and you can download all the, the high resolution photos or sketches. So let's say there's a mirror here, okay? And the mirror is on the ground like so. And I want to sketch a reflection in this mirror of something. And let's say this something is just this red dot on this ground plane. Now, what I need to do is be aware of the distance of this object. This will all make sense in just a sec. The distance of this object, and then I want to project that back into the mirror. So if I were doing that reflection, it would essentially be something like that, okay? Because I'm trying to respect the distance here. Where does that come from? It comes from physics, where when light hits a surface, if I were to draw a vertical line, here's the mirror, okay? Here's my light ray. What's going to happen is this angle. I used to be a math math major, by the way, so this is literally how I think. But this angle is going to be equal to the angle at which the light then bounces back. Okay, so that's an encapsulation or sim simplification of of why when you look at a mirror, you have those distances respected. Now, when you have something like a convex or concave mirror, what's actually going to be happening, and this is going to be from a side view. Okay, so let's say there's something here in front of this mirror. Um, let's do, yeah, something like this. So there's a round thing up here, and then there's something tall right here. If I'm observing this mirror, like so, and light is hitting the mirror, or the ob light rays are coming from the object, what's going to happen is you're going to have um, this top object reflected in the top portion of the mirror and this bottom one. But because it is convex, what actually happens is the reflection in this mirror is no longer the same height, okay, as this object. And so you get a kind of compression. 
Now, admittedly, I have forgotten the um, projection of all the rays, but I do know that this object will appear shorter. Um, so I'm going to put a pin in this and say, you know, I'm going to do a follow-up video that shows you guys a bit more of the mechanics of curved mirrors. But as I'm drawing this truck, that's kind of what I'm thinking is this, this whole surface of this vehicle is a curved mirror. So now as I'm working on the side here, okay, I'm imagining that there are things in the environment that are going to be reflecting into this curved mirror. And so my goal is to try and um, mimic, mimic, if you will, what some of those things might look like in this curved mirror side. Let me, let me grab some scrap paper because I don't want to blow through my vellum too much here. All right, I got some scrap papers. Whew. Okay. So I'm gonna put these down. So vellum's fun, but you do it does bleed through. Um, so there's also that. So this is the over shoulder camera. Has a bit better color. Hopefully, um, gives you a different viewpoint here of what I'm doing. Um, so now I've switched to my red. Let's see, red twenty seven marker R twenty seven. And now, right in the main body side, right here, I'm trying to create a gradient, but also respect and understand that some things from the environment may be reflected in this thing. Okay, so that's what that's what these darker lines are communicating. Also, because the front of the car rounds, I'm trying to translate or communicate that there's, you know, shadow core, all that good stuff happening as well. Hello, Tony from Southern California. How much is the ink? Oh, I answered that one already. Um, so once again, ink is this Copic marker various ink. That's what I'm using. So um, you can check that out and peep that. Question for you, is the stream choppy at all or does it look smooth for you guys? Um, I'm not quite sure. I think I have two apps open. Let's see if this makes a difference. Hopefully it does. We'll see. Um, but let me know if the video is choppy because it looks choppy on my end. And okay, it is a bit choppy. Ah, dang it. I think, uh, I think I'm running too many things on my computer here. So give me just a sec. Um, save. Still choppy. Ah, goodness. I may have to restart the stream. So, what's up, Jordan? Yeah, we may have to restart the stream. So, let me. I wonder if I can pause this somehow. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go to a still. But yeah, I have no idea what's happening, but dang it. Oh, well, we'll just have to deal with it. Thanks, Jordan. Oh, I have Photoshop open and I've got a bunch of stuff open here. So that's why I think. Let's see if it speeds up a bit. Nope, not yet. Sorry, guys. I feel like something always like happens. It's one of the challenges with doing this. Um, let's see, I'm connected to power. Yeah, weird. Can I draw lamps? I do take requests. Um, I usually post ahead of time. So I've already committed to drawing certain things today. So, you know what? We're just gonna go with it. Um, we'll just, pretend that it's a, um, what do you call it? Uh, 24 frames per second stream or something. <laughs> we'll just pretend it's a, it has a cinematic quality to it. 
neighbor's Wi-Fi. No, I'm I'm actually hardwired into my cable modem like directly so that you know nothing goes wrong. Um, I try to make sure that I at least have a good connection if nothing else. All right, so I'll kind of bounce around here a bit, but um, I also like to capture any shadowed areas as well. So on the lights, for example, you know, just taking a gray marker and going over this right in here. And this is actually, um, I, I got some more commissioned commission work rather to do some illustrations for some people. So um, I'm gonna be doing that after the video. So this is kind of my warm up um, for all of that. So just taking this opportunity to kind of practice on my vellum here. Hello, Anil. Welcome. But yeah, just kind of blocking in shadows for the wheel. And you guys can ask me any questions about life or sketching or anything, design career, whatever. Um, I'm totally open. So I'm a mostly open book. If you ever were wondering. But yeah, just filling in like the wheel wells here. And I'll get to the wheels in just a sec. I'm using a an 80% gray because I'm not ready to commit to black. The nice thing about using like a an 80% or even 70% gray to do this step is it gives you a little bit of headroom in terms of value. So if I need to come in and make something a little darker, it's not pure black. And I can always push that um, value just a little bit. So that's why I like using, um, you know, like an 80 or 70% gray. So these marks, I'm intending to blend and I'm probably doing this a little bit backwards, but you know, YOLO, light fastness or longevity. Yeah, I do. I'm not really loving the front of this truck. <laughs> I'm gonna have to change some things. Looks looks kind of weird. Um, do I care about light fastness? Yes. So the cool thing is if you use like a Copic marker and people always ask me, oh, do they sponsor you? I'm like, no, they just make a really good product. Um, the ink is archival. So I mean, you, you obviously don't want to expose it to UV light constantly because that's going to make it um, fade or react. I mean, UV is high energy electromagnetic radiation. So you want to be definitely aware of where you put your artwork. But um, the nice thing is the ink is acid free, archival, um, non toxic. So, and it blends well. I like it. At present, which automobile company do I work for? I work for no automobile company. Um, I just like drawing cars. I had a chance to when I was in college and whoa, this red marker is just like insane. Let me, we can clean that up. Thankfully, it dripped in a good spot. I refilled this marker and I put too much ink in it. So it's like super juicy. So we're gonna let it do its thing here. Yeah, the, the cover is like, it's like a crime scene over here. So it's gonna be a fun cleanup session after, after this video. But yeah, I don't work for an automobile company. I had a chance um, when I was in college because I worked for GM on an internship, but decided against it because just for a few reasons. I I didn't like the idea that I would work on a car or project for, you know, years and it may not launch. So if you see a car on the road today, chances are, not always, but chances are that project began, you know, five years ago. So can I review cheap markers versus Copics? Yes, I can. What would you like to know? Is it value, quality? Give me some, <laughs> this is so bad. Uh, give me some uh, definition on what you're, what you're after. But yeah, it takes about five years for a vehicle to hit the road. So I was like, you know what? I don't, 
I don't really want to have to um, wait that long for my products to come out. So I decided to focus on product design. So that's what I do. And most of what I do is consumer electronics or um, some toy design illustrations for people as well, that kind of thing. So that's what I do. Okay, kind of lost my spot here. So we're gonna get back to it. I'm gonna set my white over to the side here and let's grab, let's grab a white pencil if I have one. Cause I am gonna need one. So I may have to run upstairs and get one. Sorry guys. Oh wait. Yeah, all right. It's okay, we'll be fine. Oh, you work for GM Building Cars. That's cool. Um, did you study design? What did what, what's your what's your background, Derek? So I just want to get some red on the top here and on the back. Make sure we respect our part lines. Got our body line here. And so hopefully you guys can see how this is working out. So yeah, what is it you want to know about cheap markers? Um, and define cheap, like, there's a saying that goes, buy it nice or buy it twice. I tend to, I tend to buy it nice so I don't have to go back and, you know, buy more stuff, but that's just me. All right, let's get this wheel in here. So something you'll see automotive designers do sometimes is they, they won't finish, you know, the wheel or just leave a little bit of white at the bottom. And it just helps the vehicle feel less, um, heavy, I guess, if you will. Sometimes the wheels won't even be finished or totally shaded in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it myself here. But in case you're wondering why that is, just, you know, especially if it's like a big, heavy wheel, sometimes it'll just even be something like this, and then we'll hint at, you know, the mechanics underneath, and then just kind of sketch in that other portion. But not entirely ground the whole thing. Don't worry, I forgot who asked for the bottles. Um, we'll have time to do that. So if you're if you're like, man, he's taking a long time with this this truck thing. Um, we'll have time. Don't worry. About it. Okay. So now I'm just going to take this 30%, just kind of blend over the red. I actually want to try and keep some of the red in the wheel because uh, it'll help it feel like the light. Seriously, my 50% gray is missing now. Um, but it'll, it'll help it feel like the light in the scene is affecting the object itself. So that was 30, now I can do some 50 and just kind of blend, blend these up. Add a little bit of shadow here. Like so. Oh wait, 80 markers for 70 pounds. That's actually, that's not a bad deal. At least I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's a bad deal. Is that? It sounds good. If my if my math is correct, it actually sounds like pretty good. Uh, pretty good deal you got. Okay, so that was seventy. So now I can jump to something a little darker, like eighty, ninety, or hundred, um, and then we'll finish things up with some white and all that. Um, for the rims, I'm just gonna add some shadowing where it needs it. We'll blend these in as well. Let 
because the back wheel is toward the back of the vehicle, as I just called it, the back wheel, um, I'm not gonna add as much detail to that wheel. And then we'll fix up the front of the vehicle as well. Um, so now I wanna get the spaces between the spokes on the wheel in. So I've got my 80% or C8 marker here. We'll just block this in. We'll use black to enhance as well, but you always wanna work light until you get it right, okay? Lightest lights all the way to your darkest darks as much as you can. Um, and then if, if you can't, just be prepared to have something opaque to put over that. So in my case, that's gonna be just some white um, brush that I'm kind of saving for the end. So like I said, I'll take a little bit more time on the front wheel because it is closer to the viewer. And I just wanna make sure I kind of get, get this one right. Um, usually I find that if, if you get the, um, if you get the front details right and just kind of ground things, then the human eye and brain are just a lot more forgiving about you not having um, everything perfect and in place. So that's another uh, sleight of hand trick that you can use. Sleight of pencil, I guess, trick that you can use. So rather than using marker, I'm just using some pencil here and shading from the inside where it would be darkest and just kind of moving out. And you can see the red is interacting with the gray and I've got this nice light on the top of the wheel here. Okay, a couple little treads. Did I work on the back of the vellum? Yes, I did work on the back of the vellum as well. Good question, thanks for asking. Again, my apologies about the delay today. I swear, I like, I even skipped going to the gym this morning so I could set everything up and I did. And then at the last minute, because you know how designers are, we're like, oh, let's try something new. And then I tried something new and then that did not work out. So my apologies for the delay on this one. And then the vellum, like a like a one thing I love about it is it does have a nice texture to it. So pencil tends to kind of work nicely with it, as far as you know, shading over the marker and then the blending works. It's almost like you kind of think of it like premium tracing paper. Do I recommend fine lining the sketch before or after? Um, I would do after. I like doing it after um, if I can. So work light with your pencil, especially if it's, I would, I would consider this more of a render than a sketch, um, just because I'm taking so much time on it and I'm um, trying to, you know, color everything in and, and all that stuff. So, but if you can help it, yeah, doing your, your lines, line work after is better. So work, work light with your lines and then come back and apply what you need to. Okay, so we'll keep this side a little looser, like so. I'm using an 80% gray right now. Now I'm gonna bring out the black and that's gonna just help punch things where we need it to have the right contrast. You can use, you can use a black pencil, you can use a black marker. You know, it just depends on what, what you want to do. And as always, I'm, I'm more after general effect than I am um, absolute precision in my work. So that's just how I flow. Do I work on the back? Yep. Uh, how was corporate environment during GM? How were reviews? Um, it was good. I mean, I learned a ton just about professionalism and working collaboratively with designers and engineers on, you know, multidisciplinary team and project. Um, 
but yeah, it, the union thing was interesting in some ways, um, but I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to get political at all. But yeah, it was it was interesting for sure. Okay, so right here, just taking my pencil on the underside and you can see here, just adding a little bit of, I'll call it shadow core to this kind of um, feature that we added. Just being careful to not be too overwhelming with the black because there is gonna be some reflected light that happens on the underside from the ground. So that's a thing that's gonna happen. So that's why I have like this little light spot right there as we're going. A bit more shading here. Again, once again, my apologies for, for starting late today. Maybe I'll just move the start time to 10.15. <laughs> or sorry, 9.15. It's 10.15 where I am. But uh, yeah. What pencil am I using? I work my violin. So all the links or all the materials I use in my videos, I put the links um, in the description. So this is a Prismacolor pencil. I got mine on Amazon, but you can buy yours wherever you want. If you buy it on Amazon, however, you do help support the channel, so I appreciate that. If you do, um, just make sure you use those links. Okay, I think my 70% is kind of dying, but I'm going to use it to just fill in my grill area here and hope, hope that it lasts long enough. No! I have two of them for some reason. I just bought some new inks too. I'm excited for those to come. Um, I just got some some more gray because I was just kind of running out of everything. So, okay. So I'm just using this 70% gray just to block in the front of the truck here. Let's flip over while that's drying. And I'm gonna work on the inside a little bit like so. And with the gray marker, I'm just shading like, you know, where I think the dash would be, maybe the top of the cab on the inside as well. Let's come down here. Let's get the rest of the greenhouse in. And again, because it's vellum, I can work both sides. which is fine. Actually, I'm going to bring this through. And on the front here, I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do with the A-pillar. So I'm going to leave that for now. But like I said, work the front, work the back. It sounds like lyrics to a, a rap song or something. Um, but yeah, work the front, work the back. Because you can kind of work in half tones that way as well. Do I come live every day? No, I don't. Um, I mean, if I was making enough money doing it, then I might consider that. But uh, this is this right today is just this is pure fun for me. This is not um, if you want to contribute my uh, Patreon and PayPal and Venmo links are there. But this is this is all fun. I just I just really enjoy it. So thanks for being here. If this is your first time, if it's not your first time, no thanks. Just kidding. Thanks anyways <laughs> for being here as well. Love you guys, and I love hanging out. So it'll keep getting better. I appreciate your patience and um, working with me on on this passion project of mine. And yeah. It's always wild to just like sit and think and be like, wow, there are actually people 
watching me do what I love. That's that's pretty cool. So thank you. So yeah, just uh, blocking in these black areas, like I mentioned, being you know somewhat delicate with the black. It's really hard to correct um, black if you get it wrong. So just want to be sensitive to that as we're able, if we can. Okay. Just using this to kind of finish out our go here. I probably do need to go get um, that white pencil. So I'm gonna see if I can find one somewhere. Also the, the proceeds from the channel, um, any ad revenue, whatever that I, I do get, I tend to use on materials. So um, if you feel so inclined and wanna help support, like I said, those links are a great way to do it. Um, so much appreciated. If you do. My 10.15 is better for my day. Oh, okay. All right. I could uh, start a little later. I, I, I just picked a random time, honestly, because I was like, I just need to commit to something. Um, so the time can evolve and change. That's, that's totally possible. Um, so I'm happy to tweak things for you guys if need be. All right. Couple more things here. I mean, one of the tough things about drawing, I've, I'm pretty sure I've said this before, is sometimes it's hard to know when to stop <laughs> and just be like, okay, that's good enough. Um, but that that just comes with experience. It's just something something you have to decide and experience, and it depends on the purpose of your drawing. So if this was like a final presentation drawing, I might spend another you know hour or two on this drawing, but since it's for you guys and I'm just, you know, trying to be quick, um, I won't spend nearly as much time on it, but drawing for hours and hours on the same drawing is not something I enjoy <laughs> so much as I enjoy um, just pumping out tons of stuff. So that's, uh, that's kind of my style. I do tend to ignore the lug nuts as well. Um, just visually, they're not necessary um, here because I'm just trying to communicate, oh, this is a wheel and that's okay. All right, so just some pencil to kind of help with the gradation and tone here on this wheel. Just like that. Okay, so we started with our wash on the back. Um, it'll, thank you, yeah, it's starting to pop. It'll really start to pop when, when we get to the white paint section of the drawing. So you'll want to hang hang around for that. Okay, so I think I figured out what I want to do with this pillar. And then I'm gonna work that into maybe some element here on the truck. Just on this other side. So this one, I'm gonna make this black. Just the A pillar, we'll just black it out. like that. Try and leave a couple white spots as well. Okay, so something like that. And then this, I just kind of imagine being some sort of vent port. So hopefully you can understand and see a bit of the process here that, and, and just at a, at a high level, you know, it's about capturing effect and not necessarily being the most precise for me, um, working light until you get it right. You're choosing the right paper to use, okay? So again, with the vellum, I can work both sides of the drawing 
and um, I can build tone and I have the flexibility of using, you know, the pencil on top for that texture. So, you know, as opposed to marker paper, which will give me a much cleaner drawing, but in some ways is, is a bit more limiting. Um, vellum is also expensive, so there's that. So there's all those things to consider, but I do enjoy using it. But just find what works for you, for sure, and then use that. That's what I would recommend. Okay, so we got our scrap papers. There's our sketch there. Um, I really do need to get that white pencil because I need to kind of lighten up um, some of these spots here in the middle. So I'm going to set this down for a minute and I'll be right back with that pencil. I think is the hardest thing to draw. Um, for me, people are the hardest thing to draw. So I tend not to do or show them very much. Um, but it is something I, I practice and work on um, just on my own and try to, to get better at. But it's definitely, definitely not my forte. Okay, so with the pencil, like I was saying, I can, I can now do things like put some light next to the, the darks. And then you start to see things will start to pop quite a bit more. Okay, so wherever there's, you know, feature line, that kind of thing, we can, we can really make it make it pop a bit more. So there's that other camera. And you can see even in this area here, it's just really starting to pop quite a bit more. And we can work that through um, create a nice little gradient as well through this spot. The white is a Prismacolor pencil as well. Yes, um, it absolutely is. And a lot of times I'll go back and do, um, I'll do the uh, like more uh, an opaque white ink on top of this as well, just to help things pop even more. And yeah, you wanna be somewhat judicious with your use of the pencil. Um, that's something you, for sure you wanna kind of pay attention to. Don't want everything to have uh, little white dots all over it. And you wanna make sure the contrast and emphasis is showing up in the right areas of your sketch. So like this area, I know I can't get it any whiter because it already has the ink in it. Um, so I'll have to use something else to kind of pop that, but I'll show you that in just a minute. Now for this grill, I'm gonna rotate this paper around and just with, let's see, I'm gonna, I like if this shape comes out like so. So in this area, just kind of shade this in a little bit. We'll make this whiter right there. So now it's catching some light. And then on the tops of each of these kind of fins, just a couple little pencil lines here, just to show that they're, they're catching some light. Like so. Just like that. Can anyone learn to sketch? How were you when you just started out? Um, so there was a, a live stream a little while back where I actually showed some of my early sketches. Um, so you'll wanna kind of check those out. Looks like I made a mistake there. Um, you'll wanna check those out. And if you do, I do kind of show, that's gonna drive me crazy. 
Um, I show some of my earlier sketch work and kind of how I've evolved since then. So you'll want to peep that. But yeah, I, I've learned a ton. Um, I'm always learning <laughs> something new and always trying to get better. So that's something I, I value tremendously. And um, I highly recommend for you guys as well. It's like, if you ever feel like you've learned enough, chances are <laughs> you're at the inflection point where things will just start to go downhill for you because um, that's that's basically where you've decided you're done learning. And I don't think there's anything like that. So yeah, side rant over. <laughs> I'm always learning something new. Um, try, to, try to find inspiring people that you can follow and, um, you know, pick from their work, all that good stuff, and you'll be fine. Do I know what video that is? Um, let me, you can either email me or, um, actually email me would be the best, best thing or comment on the video after it's posted. And then I'll get a notification and I can send you the link to that. So that's what I would, that's what I would do. All right. This is starting to feel pretty good. Like I'm okay with, with this minus this little area, which I'm going to attempt to fix. Um, I have an idea of how I can fix that. So let me flip back over here make sure, okay, far side, I'm going to make this a bit darker just by shading on the back with some marker. We've got our C8 here. And hopefully you guys are learning a little bit about lighting and kind of how I set things up. Um, if you can't tell the lights coming from the the top, let's see, this kind of side, and then there's probably one over here as well. Um, let's block in. Uh, should we do a shadow? Yeah, we should probably do a shadow on this one. No, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it fresh. Let's keep it fresh and light today. Keep it nice and fresh. Fresh and so clean. Sir Lucius would have it no other way. All right, so now I'm switching to kind of this pigment pen. And this one is a, I don't even know what brand it is. I bought it, I think I bought this in California a long time ago. Pen Touch, oh, it's a Sakura uh, Pen Touch. Um, I like it because it's a little bit finer than um, my other pen that I have. So I like to use this one kind of for, for details, but it's not as opaque as that other one. Um, and the other one I'm talking about is this one, which is my favorite, the Faber-Castle Pitt Artist Pen. Um, I don't know if, you know, some of you are in different countries, so I'm not sure if they'll have this where you are, but I do like, so here, even on the front, I can, you know, hit some of these spots and the ink is pretty opaque. The challenge or problem is that it's also, um, there's a little trick. You can put down some ink and just take your finger and brush it. And then that way you get a little bit of a gradient, but the, uh, the nib is just so broad. So that's one of the things I, I don't love about it. So in case you're wondering, but the ink is fairly opaque, um, flows really well. And it's nice because I don't have to, you know, carry around my tube of wash, which I do have. I have it somewhere. I just found my brush, which is awesome. Um, and I can use that too. But like I was saying earlier, this area, the idea I had was just to use this white pen. And now I can hit that clean it up just a little bit. Um, same with the wheel stuff too, if I want to or need to. Just kind of hit those areas like so, start to make things pop. Draw the cyber truck, it's just polygons. That's true, I did draw the cyber truck um, and you can check that video out as well if you're interested on my YouTube video list. All right, so I just want to get some seat silhouettes in here. 
So I'm on the back of the paper again, and I'm just gonna block in, you know, where there might be some seat stuff in the back of this truck. And, you know, maybe there's some separation in the glass on the back as well. So now when I flip it over, it's a little lighter than the rest of the uh, colors that I'm using on the front because you always wanna work light until you get it right. And it'll help you just blend things if need be. So just like that. This is really fun. Really, really fun. Prismacolor pencil versus polychromos. I have not tried. Um, the reason I use these is I've just always used them. <laughs> and I don't, unless polychromos is like super cheap or something, um, I probably wouldn't try it. But that's because I have just used these for so long. So do I know of Scott Robertson? Yes, I have met Scott Robertson. He's a very, very nice guy. Um, he was very uh, complimentary and helpful to me when I did meet him. So um, his work is pretty good. And he was super influential for me. Like I did, um, like he has a website, I think it's even still up called drawthrough.com. And that's where I learned a lot of stuff too. Um, I learned a lot from Feng Zhu. I don't know if you if you know who that is, and I don't know if I'm even saying his name right. It might be Feng Shu. I don't I don't know how to say his name, but um, he has a school now. But back when I was in school, he had just a website, and so I learned a ton from him. Um, I learned a ton in college, just from my teachers as well. Why am I talking about all these people? <laughs> the question was about Scott. Yes, I've met Scott. Oh, polychromos are Faber Castle and pretty expensive. Okay, I had no idea, but now I know. All right, I'm just gonna block in just, you know, tail light, maybe bumper type thing on the back with a little bit of black, not too heavy. It's funny, as organized as I was today, like I said, I skipped the gym just so I could make this make this presentation for you guys, which is a big deal because I go to the gym every day. Um, and still stuff went wrong. So um, yeah, I'll probably I'll probably just move the start time for the stream. And then as far as like doors and stuff go, I, I, I tend to just throw in a very, very light line. Because um, I feel like I feel as though when you do throw in the functional bits on the sketch, sometimes they can just be so heavy that you um, you almost lose out on the general effect. Okay, so I like to just hint at some stuff. So hint at a door handle, that kind of thing. And then with the light, because I do have this artist pen, I can come in and really start to you know, make this pop a little bit more. Just in the, the light section here on the sketch. I feel like I'm so behind lately. I've been um, working on, and thankfully I'm not, I'm not complaining by any means, um, but I've just been working on a lot of uh, consulting projects which is good. So if you guys have projects you want me to do, that's, that's something I'm open to as well. But uh, yeah, I've just been working a lot on um, projects this week. So I haven't really had time to just do as much sketching for fun. So this is, this is really it's just, it's just good to uh, be able to do this today with you guys. All right, so a little bit more attention here on our front wheel. Again, because it is in the front, um, I tend to give things in the front a bit more time and attention than I would 
those in the back, okay? Architecture sketches, please. Um, maybe next time I did do one. Maybe just send me send me an email. Tell you what, and I will point you to those sketches because I did do that on the live stream. It was a couple of streams ago, um, and you can find you can find that as well. So you check that out. All right, so this is fun, and if you were with me from the beginning, you're probably like, what is he doing? What's happening? He is shading the whole thing with this giant marker pad thing. What's going on? But here we are. It's all part of the plan. And a lot of times when I do go into a sketch, I'm not entirely sure how it'll turn out. But you kind of get to a point where you just know how to work with what you got. And that's what we do. So um, one of the bon mantras or things I tell myself, especially when I do woodworking, which is something I actually do as well, um, is I tell myself... There's always a fix. There is always a fix. And that immediately takes a lot of pressure off getting the thing perfect. And if you're creative, like these red splotches, I'm not worrying about mostly because I could scan this in or take a picture and fix that. Or if I really wanted to, I could, you know, turn this into a, a shadow of some sort and cover that up. And then this could be a background thing or whatever. So I'm not super worried about that stuff. And that's why. So just remember, tell yourself there's always a fix. And, you know, you can always come back in and change something. And that's the benefit of working light until you get it right is you can always you can always fix your fix your problems it may not be the same in life um, it may be painful it may be the case that it takes a lot of time and effort but and sometimes honestly the fix is just starting over but you tell yourself that it's a lot easier to just relax and get your drawing done okay all right just a couple more things and I'm going to call this one done. And then I will do real quick because there was a question earlier about it. Um, just some water bottles. And I'm not sure if your hope was to see like transparent or translucent or what your thinking was there. Um, but I'm happy to kind of take suggestions. So if I were doing, let's say we did just a couple water bottles. What would you guys want to see specifically? So you tell me. Would love to see some of the sketches you do in the process of woodworking. Okay, so if you go to um, Instagram.com slash Mr. Project. Mr. Project, yeah. So that's my... Should I put an equal sign there? There we go. Um, so if you go there, <clears throat> that is my um, Instagram for woodworking. And I haven't updated it lately just because it's winter and it's kind of yucky to work outside in the winter. Um, but I, I do have some sketches there. Um, a few things related to personal life as well. So don't just don't murder me if you figure out where I live or whatever. Um, <laughs> Just kidding. You guys aren't that way. At least I hope not. Okay, a couple more things here. Like I said, drawings, you can just, sometimes you can go, go, go. And then sometimes you feel like you're done, but then you're like, oh, I just need to change this one thing. Just this one thing. I need just this little highlight. And then you're like, okay, I can be done now. 
And then before you know it, it's like, oh, one more thing. So, but I think I'm in a pretty, pretty decent place here. We can call this mostly good. Wrap it up. Let's put some sort of logo on the front. That's my logo placeholder. Okay, so that's my that's my truck sketch for you guys today. So I'm gonna take a picture of this, and we will. Um, I'll make it available on the what do you call it? <laughs> Google Drive. Do you believe in being a jack of all trades approach or should an artist designer focus on one area when they're grounded? Um, so traditionally speaking, there's a, a saying that goes, you know, you want to be a T-shaped designer, meaning you have a bunch of um, skills laterally that aren't necessarily within the same thing. So you might be good at furniture and a few other things. Um, but I think I think there's nothing wrong with being um, a jack of all trades, which I perceive as more of an X-shaped designer. So what I mean is a T-shaped designer is something like this, <clears throat> where, you know, let's say this is you and you have a bunch of skills along this continuum. You know, this might be CAD and this might be sketch. Um, this might be presentation. Here's some illustration skills, graphic design, research, research. Okay. And you might have tremendous depth. Like this is probably me where I've got, you know, tons of depth in sketching and CAD. I'm reasonably good at CAD. Maybe I'll stop it about there. Presentation. You know, and, and over the years, an illustration, maybe I'm like halfway there, graphic design, I'm like that, research, I'm like that. So um, while this does not look like a T, <laughs> typically when you draw these, um, it's something like this. So that's that's kind of where the T comes from. It's like you have a strong core competency in something, and then you have a breadth of skills this way. But lately I've been thinking more, you know, it's more about being an X-shaped designer. So you kind of have your core bundle of skills, and then you want to pick maybe four things, three or four things that you're, you're really, you are you want to push into or be good at. And then that helps give you focus rather than, you know, con constantly just branching out all the way. So that's my little spiel. I can do a video on this if you want. So let me know. Did I color it only with colored pencils? No, this is marker, uh, colored pencil, we have some white paint marker as well um, that all went into this. So, and this is just my warm up sketch for today. I'll be doing some commission artwork for some new clients. So I was like, let me, let me get out all the bugs on this piece. And then when I do the real one, I won't make mistakes like that. So. Okay, if you have to bounce, that's totally fine, but I'm going to do those bottles real quick. So how about we do, I'll just do two bottles on this page or something. Um, so I'll start with some axes like this, and then let's just do a couple ellipses, like so, like so. Okay, and now we get to decide the profile. Um, this is somewhat typical profile that I like to use. And then sometimes I like to angle this one. You've probably seen me do do this bottle a couple times. But maybe this is maybe this is a strap or something. It's a part of this this bottle. And if we keep this ellipse, you know, this could be some sort of lid element. Maybe you do. Let's see, you do slide this forward, which allows you to drink. And yeah, that one looks all right. And then maybe this one is just your typical, you know, it has a lid here. Maybe we round off from the lid. And we just connect 
like so. Just like that. And I really like straps, <laughs> but I don't want to put one on this one. Um, this one we could say maybe it's half player and half some material. So I'll show you how I do clear things. One of the things that helps a ton is if you have a background element of some sort. Okay, so that helps a ton. Um, but if it is clear, again, if you use the right type of paper, it, it's a lot easier to show things going through other things. So in the case of this background, let's say I'm gonna make the background red. It's gonna help clean up some of this um, splotchiness. Water bottle suggestion designed for always on you. I always forget my water bottle. Um, too late for that one. I missed it, I'm sorry. I missed your suggestion, but perhaps another time. I've already committed to, to this bottle here, so. Okay, so this one may be a little clear as well, translucent portion. Some part of the lid showing through. Okay, so let's get um, the opaque bits done first. So we'll do the opaque bits on both of these first, and then we'll do the translucent. Um, like I said, I'll use red for the background on this one, so I'm gonna use blue for the bottle itself. See, this is blue green. So, or I'm just going to use whatever markers I have. We'll just make it work. So I've got a green seven. I've got orange, pink, red. I think I left all my other markers somewhere else. It's a big marker stack. You guys can't see this, but. It's a big stack. All right, uh, yellow, green, yellow, green, okay. So I have like hundreds of markers. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So this is my yellow, green marker box. And you can see those are all my yellow, green <laughs> Copic markers. So <laughs> it's pretty easy for me to find them. I just have to, uh, I just have to grab the box, which is actually a pretty good song too. If you haven't listened to it yet. All right. <clears throat> so once again, light till you get it right. Okay. So create this outline. Personally, I like doing the outline because it helps me just, I don't know. It's, it's almost like a mental thing. It just helps me know where to put stuff. All right. Just kind of work it and get... Your shadow core is being built up as well. And then let's make my lid here green as well, just to tie the design together from a material standpoint. Something like this. We'll keep this one more sketchy than we did with the truck. So I'm not gonna belabor it too much. So I started with a green three, now I'm at green five. We'll go all the way up to green nine, just to make sure we get the right blends and contrasts that we want to have. And it's always helpful to rotate your paper to where you're most comfortable with drawing. So I don't know if you guys know, but I also do workshops. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to do them online where I'll actually do more of taking your work and critiquing it and giving more hands-on dedicated attention. But I just, I just found out I'm gonna be going to Mexico uh, in May. So that's going to be super fun. I'm excited about that. 
going to be awesome. So I'm just trying to create a gradient here where I have a shadow core, some highlight, and a decent bit of contrast in this body and just kind of blend back. Um, admittedly, I made a mistake earlier on. I didn't point out to you guys in just how I was lighting this. So I've kind of had to change my lighting approach a little bit as we went, went by here, but it's okay. Like I said earlier, there's always a fix. So that is what we're doing. Looking for markers is brushing through light. Yes, <laughs> it absolutely is. Um, it's like, I, I try to get organized, but then after every stream or video or project, it's like chaos because, and this is how it is with woodworking too. I just throw stuff everywhere. And then before you know it, everything's a mess. So yeah, I'm going to keep this arrow in here. So just making sure I'm careful with my outline. Looks like the video sped up again, I think. Did this camera turn off? Maybe. Yeah, it did. Interesting. Okay. It's like I'll have to do some, some technical support, self-technical support when I'm done. So yeah, like I said, just keeping it a little sketchier. Right through here. All right. Now for our other bottle. Hello, Robert from Italy. What's up? What's heck? What's happening? What's cracking? What's pop a -lopping? Thank you. I found this playlist on Spotify that oh, happens to be copyright free, so I can use it in my YouTube videos. Well, not my YouTube videos, but my uh, streaming. So that's what I'm using right now. Okay. Oh yeah, I was saying earlier, I just bought a, a set of inks and I got a set of um, gray inks. So thank you for watching the videos because by watching the videos, I make a little bit on ads, not a ton. Like it's literally enough to just keep the lights on, keep the show going and uh, Help me buy some markers. So I appreciate the support. If you want to support in other ways, all that information is in the video description. Check that out if you want to. All right, and then the inside here. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So with translucent things, I am good, Robert. Thank you. Um, with transition things, I like to just do kind of a, a light gray outline like that. Okay. We'll revisit that. Same thing here. Just a light gray kind of outline. And then this is where the magic happens. So since I'm making the background red, I'm going to use my red 24. And my red 22. So the 22 I'm going to put behind this bottle, like so. And this line, I'm actually going to move this line ever so slightly. Because when you look through glass or plastic, things tend to get distorted. And this may not be completely accurate to the laws of physics, whatever, but it's grounded in principles and that's the important part here. Okay, 
And now outside of this bottle, I'm just gonna outline the rest of the background here. So this, this section, I'm going to jump to the 24 and make it just a little darker or deeper in value rather. So just like that. I can't believe it's Friday already. I swear the weeks are just like flying by lately. And it's the middle of February. Where is the year going? You know? It's crazy. All right. <clears throat> so you can see that I have this background element that appears to be lighter than the rest of the background, which helps create the impression that there's some translucency happening. And now on the front side, back with this red 24, you can see I can create that difference, okay? And on the outside of the bottle, with my line weight, and like I said, we revisit this area. So for the thickness, just in the inside, I'm gonna kinda add these little artifacts. Okay, just stuff like that. And I wonder if I can get this camera to work. Let's see, off, on. Okay, so now we're on. All right, so that's working now. So right, let's see. Right here, that's where I'm talking about. So I can work these sections of the bottle. I think, where's the best view? I'm looking at it in reverse on my computer screen, so my apologies for that. But if I want to show that thickness, just adding that little kind of artifact, and then you can add white on top of that as well for your reflections. Yeah. So I'm gonna cut back here. So hopefully that hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, helps you understand um, kind of the process there. And to be clear, I'm using vellum, but I could be doing this with marker paper. Um, the difference is I couldn't shade on the back. I'll just have to use the two different markers to get the right values. Would you rather have a photographic memory or keep my current ability to draw from your imagination? Huh, that's interesting. I, I don't know, I'd have to think about that one. It would be awesome to have a photographic memory because then I could just recall anything that I've ever seen and use that for reference in my head. It sounds sounds awesome. What do you guys think? It's a really good question. All right, so just on the top here, nice, sharp, almost artifact type thing, a little bit of shading there. And then with my white, which is what I was talking about, I can come in and start to add any highlights they need to. And it is a white pen. It's not exactly gouache. It's convenient is what it is. But lightest lights against your darkest darks, it's going to give you the appearance of, of things just popping. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to do with that clear section.
I probably should break out my gouache paint, but alas, I was not prepared, like I mentioned. So, but throwing in a couple, couple of highlight spots there to help. And for the inside of the bottle, I'm just gonna make sure this dries. I'm gonna wait a minute because I'm, I'm getting too hasty here. So, just finish out a bit on this side. So sometimes if you have two sketches on a page, you can finish them to do two different levels to communicate a sense of importance for one or the other. So in this case, you know, just using the pencil to kind of finish it out, get the sh get a little bit of shade in where I need it. Um, just finish out the strap as well. Keep it loose. Man, I'm like blowing through. I'm like blowing through this uh, this vellum. It's crazy. I just want to help with the definition on the top here with the pencil. Who needs a photographic memory? Let's see, when a world of reference is available at fingertips. Yeah, that's true. That is absolutely true. All right. Man, we went long in the stream today. For those of you who've held out, kudos. I know it's a lot. <laughs> and uh, like I mentioned, this is this is just my fun time for the week. So I appreciate you hanging out, being here, being willing to give suggestions and feedback and all that good stuff. So thank you. All right, so again, shading on the back. Um, I didn't put water in the bottle, but that's okay. Okay, this is the gray that is not working, so I need to stop using it. Back to 50. This is good music. I guess I could do something like this. And then just shade the back side. So it's almost like there's water in there. Here we go. Yeah, hunting for markers is definitely like trying to find that, that one Lego piece that you need. Do you guys do Legos? I do Legos. Uh, mostly with my kids, but um, sometimes we'll get a big set and do that together. Always fun. All right, let's do a black lid. So we'll do C8, 9, and We'll do some black with some pencil. Do you want the lid to be shiny or matte? Shiny probably makes no sense, but if you want it shiny, we'll do shiny. 
Let me know. I, I await your votes. And while I wait for your votes, I will touch up this concept and give it just a little bit of pink on the inside because this portion's transparent. Well, maybe not. It's a little cheat. Shiny, okay. One person said shiny, so they win. You win the day. All right, so shiny it is. Okay, shiny, let me think. Black, shiny, we wanna do, let's start with the gray. Gray eight here. So with shiny things, you're going to get just crisper highlights for one, and you get a little bit of uh, gradients as well with the lighting. So we'll get to that in just a minute. I'm just trying to kind of block in some stuff here, and then we'll start shading in. Back to your question though about um, photographic memory and drawing and all that. I think, um, let's see. I think, yeah, it would be good to it would be good to just recall whatever reference you want. Um, but someone made a good point, which is to say, well, yeah, we have so much reference available online. Um, you can take pictures. We're we're all walking around with supercomputers. So it's not like it would be that hard to not get reference right now if you needed it. Like for me, if I'm starting a new project, I'll just um, pull up an image online. If I've never sketched the thing before, it's just, it's really easy to get that stuff, so. All right, so the black lines here, I'm using, again, just a nice thin line, good contrast, trying to be sensitive to maintaining the form while showing some bit of highlight as well. So this is just black and 80% with a 70 mixed in here. Oh yeah, Kim Kim Jung Yi, or I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. He um, he's insane. I highly respect him. If you haven't checked his his work out, be sure to check it out. Um, just incredible talent as far as memory recall and um, just being able to draw anything. Super, super, super talented dude. <clears throat> so you wanna check out his work too. For a minute he was following me on Instagram. I don't think he is anymore, but um, it was back when Instagram wasn't a complete and utter mess of stuff. Kind of what it is now. All right, so we'll get some highlighting in here. The 
Yeah, it's good music. All right, so probably something like that. I'm going to switch to this other camera just so you can see what I did with the lid. And the perspective is distorting it a little bit. I mean, the lid is a little bit off too, but um, don't be dissuaded by that. Come together. Yeah, so let me know if this angle works for you at all, if this is something you like, if it's just pointless, let me know that too. Um, I just think it's nice to see a little bit closer and you can uh, kind of see a bit of what I'm doing. Oh wait, you couldn't just now see what I'm doing. Now you can see what I'm doing. But yeah, this, uh, this pit pen is, it's really nice. Um, if you're just looking for a way to apply opaque white on the go, it's pretty, pretty effective, um, pen. So check those out. And it wasn't terribly expensive either. Um, if I recall correctly, but, uh, wow, I've been going for an hour and 41 minutes. It's crazy. I've got to go get lunch get the rest of my day going but thank you so much for hanging sorry again we started late this is like i think this is the longest live i've done um i had this crazy idea once i was like maybe what, what would it be if i just streamed for like 24 hours one day <laughs> but that would, that would probably be insane anyhow this sketch needs more work i'm not gonna lie it probably needs another 15, 20 minutes, but I'm gonna leave it for now. Um, so we did uh, the water bottle sketches here and we kicked things off with this truck sketch, showed you that process. So if you want, the, the stream will be live after um, I hang up or end this and you guys can watch it again if you want, skip ahead um, or whatever. But again, appreciate the support and appreciate you guys hanging this whole time. Shout out to Vicari, he's always here. He, she, they are always here. Um, and to all of you, and if I don't if I don't call your name out, that's fine. Um, doesn't mean I don't care, it just means that my brain is completely mush because that's how it is. But um, thank you so much for being here. And it means a lot that you're interested in my hobby and that we can spend this time together. Thanks for the suggestions. Um, I'm gonna take some pictures and post the sketches up. So that'll be live after the video goes up and probably after I after I uh, have some lunch and eat, I will, I'll post that up and you guys can check that out. So with that, thank you. And we'll see you next time on Sketch-A-Day. Thanks guys. Bye, see ya.